Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me today for this special yin practice devoted to springtime. I am um, glad that you are here. I have a few things that you might want to have with you for this practice. I have a block nearby just for you. Some we're going to need them for a couple, one for a couple of poses. Um, if you don't have a block, you may want to use a book or something that's shaped roughly block-like. Um, we also want to have a blanket. Um, get a blanket that is kind of stiff, like a cotton blanket or a um, wool blanket, something that's not going to squish down. Like, don't get a fleece blanket. And take that blanket, and about halfway back on your mat, open it out so that it's hanging off the mat. So we're going to use that to help, help support ourselves in some of our poses. You can come back to sit right down on your mat, on your blanket right now. Beginning the practice in a seated pose. I also have with me my cup of tea. I always have a cup of tea with me when I'm practicing yin. And being hydrated is really important when we are um, practicing yoga, any kind of yoga, but um, yin yoga, we are stretching, releasing through our muscles and our tendons. And if they're properly hydrated, they're going to move better for you. I also have my candle. I'm going to light it now. My little springtime egg candle. And my Santo Paulo stick. I'm going to set that to smoke, giving me a little bit of scent. So as we're holding our yin pract postures, anything that we can do to help us keep our mind on the practice, on what we're doing, is going to be a, a big help um, overall. So I find adding some scent to the room, um, it really helps me with that. Just Get that going and then I blow it out to allow it to smoke. Set it over at the front of my mat. So it is springtime and this practice is devoted to spring. And I know that during this period, many of us are spending a lot of time cleaning, house cleaning, cleaning out closets, spring cleaning the home, maybe spending time in the yard or the garden, cleaning that out. In this practice, I want to devote some time to cleaning ourselves inside our minds in the same way as we do in our homes or in our gardens getting rid of things that are no longer serving us that we don't need anymore that don't work for us anymore making space for new things or just enjoying the airiness and the release of clutter let's begin by settling the hips down into the mat. Be comfortable here. If you want to sit up on your block or cushion, do that. Lengthen up through the spine. Roll the shoulders back and down. And let your hands rest next to your, on your legs, wherever it's comfortable. I like to take a few breaths here. Drawing your attention inward. Feeling the breath moving throughout the body. Maybe you're feeling a sense of lightness through your heart and your rib cage. Sense of being grounded, the hips down into the mat on the exhale. Breathing freely and easily. I've noticed lately in pop culture <laughs> that um, there's a, I'm not going to take that out. I 
It's a popular method for house cleaning circulating around these days from Marie Kondo saying that we should only keep objects or things in our lives that spark joy. And I would like to suggest that we apply the same theory to our thoughts, our emotions, to our mind. That the thoughts, ideas, beliefs that we carry with us should be ones that spark joy, that truly resonate with us. Spending this time on the mat, we can begin to examine those ideas, thoughts, beliefs, and to determine if they really continue to resonate with us or if it's time to realign ourselves, if it's time to release those ideas that are no longer in line with our true sense of self? Are those ideas, where did those ideas come from? Are they imposed on us by family, society, people that we work with, somewhere else, some long-held belief that we don't even know where it came from? If you're looking for a place to start, think of an area of your life where you may feel that you want to work on, that you want to improve. It might be your family life or other relationships, maybe your career, your finances, some other area of your personal life. And as we hold the po poses, let the emotions bubble up. See what rises to the surface. And from there you can begin to examine what rises to the surface to see if it sparks joy or if it resonates with you. This is a practice that we can return to regularly. as our needs, our thoughts, our circumstances change. It's definitely worthwhile to continually reevaluate the things that we hold close to us. I see this yin practice as an opportunity sort of spring clean the mind to clear out the clutter, the mental clutter that may be holding us back in certain areas of our life. Allowing for new spaces new ideas, new thoughts to come in to help us to peel away the layers of thoughts, ideas, like onion skin, peeling away the dry old areas until we can get right down to our true, our true beliefs who we truly are. A 
couple more breaths here. And begin to slowly, gently open your eyes, take in the colors around you. In our first pose, come into our first pose now. I'm going to turn so I'm facing the front of my mat. I'm going to take my block and set it up just behind my hips, maybe just off the um, blanket. Bring the heels in towards your sits bones. And we're going to come back onto that block. Lift the hips a little bit, slide the block so it's right underneath your pelvis. And begin to bring your shoulder blades down onto the mat. So we're in a supported bridge pose. Take a moment here to become really comfortable. I want the block right underneath your hips, not underneath the vertebrae in any way. Working with props is really nice. It can help us to feel very comfortable in our poses, but it can also, it takes a little bit of time sometimes to mess with them and get them so they feel exactly right. You can roll the shoulder blades underneath us, and you can choose what you want to do with your arms and legs now. For your legs, you can keep them exactly as they are. Feet and knees, hip width apart. You can bring your feet wide and knock your knees in towards one another. Releases the front of the body. You can tick-tock your feet, bring your feet, soles of the feet together, let the knees hang wide. Or you can bring the heels down to the far corners of the mat, really opening up across the front of the hips, the front of the thighs. Stay here, just like this, with your hands resting on your tummy, or one on your tummy, one on your chest. You can cup the rib cage, either of these to feel the breath moving across the front of your body. Or maybe you want to rest the hands next to your hips with the palms facing up. Or bring them out to a T or a Y, or hold opposite elbows. Any combination of these arms and legs, as long as you can completely relax, let your body drape over the block. I'm beginning this practice with a back bend because back bends are energizing. We're allowing in that energy, that creative energy of spring. And as you are here holding this pose, just bring your attention to your breath, moving across the front of your body. That sensation might feel a little more intense with the back bend that we're holding. Stay relaxed. Keep your focus inwards. And allow anything that is um, you're holding within you to bubble up to the surface.
to come out of this pose, bring the soles of your feet to the mat about hip width apart, if you've moved them. Bring your hands down to either side of the block and press into your heels, just lifting your hips just enough to slide that block out from underneath your hips. Gently lower your spine back down onto the mat. Take a couple of breaths here, lengthening out of the spine, feeling that spine react in neutral. And bring one knee and then the other into your chest. Give yourself a hug. Maybe make some circles on the ceiling with your knees. Move in one direction and then the other. And from here, we're going to make our way up to sit. So you can come up by rolling on to one side or the other in the fetal position. And then use your hands to support yourself as you rise up to sit. Or you can tuck your chin into your throat and begin to rock from the nape of your neck to your tailbone. Coming all the way up to sit. Extending the legs out in front of you, lengthen up through the spine, roll the shoulders back and down. And I want to take a um, butterfly pose here. So we're going to bring the heels in towards the body. Let the soles of your feet come together. The knees fall open wide. If you like, you can take your blocks or maybe some cushions, put them underneath your knees if you're feeling a little delicate there, or you can sit up, lift your hips up onto a cushion, or you might even want to bring your hips to the very edge of your blanket here. Up to you. Lengthen up through the spine. Give your shoulders a couple of rolls. Lift the heart on an inhale. And then as you exhale, tuck the chin into the throat. Begin to round the spine down, starting with the neck and bringing this curve down through your spine until the whole length of your spine is rounded. The shoulder blades are falling away from the spine. Chin is tucked, the head's falling really heavy. Your hands, we can start by giving the feet a little bit of a massage. Just bring your thumbs to um, the spot, you know, just around your, the ball of your foot and draw your thumbs down towards your heels. Give yourself a little massage here. It's a great way to open up the bottom of the feet. If you feel any specific area with um, a little extra tension, just linger your thumbs there, maybe um, press in and give a little circle. And you can rest your hands anywhere that feels good. When you're done with your foot massage, you can put your hands on the mat um, in front of your shins. Let your elbows relax on your knees or, or you can bring your hands to your feet. Maybe it feels better for them to rest next to your hips. It's up to you. You can interlace your fingers around your toes. Whatever feels best for you here. And if Letting your head hang heavy doesn't feel good for you. You can take your block, just balance it on your feet, and let your forehead rest down onto the block. Maybe you need a couple of blocks, or you need to stack something up so that it feels more comfortable for you. Breathing into the back body now, compressing across the front of the body. 
Feeling the breath moving through the entire length of the spine. Ready to come out of this pose, bring your hands to your mat and support yourself with your arms as you bring your shoulders back up over your hips. Give your shoulders a couple of rolls and then bring your hands to the outside of your knees, bring your knees back up to center. Hands can come to the mat just next to your hips or behind your hips and let's roll from one hip to the other. Just moving your knees like windshield wipers. Giving a little massage to those outer hips. And slide the hips back. Cross your ankles. And roll over your feet. Coming to a tabletop pose. Walking your knees underneath your your hips, your wrists are underneath your shoulders. Let's inhale to lift the tailbone. Drop the belly, roll the whole shoulders back, heart forward. Exhale to curl the tailbone down, round the spine. 
tuck the chin and drop the crown of your head. Inhale, opening the front of the body. As you exhale, curl down. Inhale to a neutral spine now. And I want you to walk your hands forward, your knees back, bringing your hip bones right down to the edge of your mat. So you might need to scooch forward or back to make that happen. Elbows are underneath the, fore, the, the shoulders here. So your upper arm is perpendicular to the floor. And the forearms are per parallel to one another. Fingertips facing forward, palms facing down. Legs are really relaxed here. You can let your feet come to the width of your mat. Let your toe heels fall open. Very relaxed legs. Bring your attention up your legs to your, um, your tailbone and turn your tailbone down just slightly, just so that you're getting a little bit of support in the low back. I want you to be feeling no discomfort in the low back, no um, crunching, no compression. So if you are, just walk your elbows forward a little bit so that you're reducing the angle of the back bend. Something else you can do here is take an, an, ex, an additional pillow and tuck it in underneath your, um, your rib cage. Give yourself a little additional support. Bringing attention up the spine, we're feeling a back bend right in the mid region of the spine. Roll your shoulders back and your heart forward. The neck is an extension of the spine, so keep the neck long, chin slightly tucked. Shoulders are rolled down and away from the ears. So it can be easy to start to slump down like this. We don't want that. We can rise up out of the shoulder girdle. If you're looking for a little more sensation in this pose, bring your elbow, you bring your hands a little bit wider and lift your elbows up off the mat. Turn the tailbone down again so that you're feeling no compression in the low back. Roll the shoulders open so that the heart raises, reaches forward and we're getting that stretch right into the front of the body. Maybe you want to walk your hands in a little bit more. Just come just until you're feeling, we, don't want, we still don't want to feel any compression in the low back. So if you're feeling that, back off the pose a little bit. Make this pose your own. You might need to bring your attention to your legs again. Relax them.
When you're ready to come out of this pose, walk your hands back to the front of the mat. If you've walked them in, lower your elbows back down onto the mat if you've lifted them. And then everyone, let the elbows come wide. Stack your hands, one hand over the other, and rest your forehead. Take a couple of breaths here. Just releasing out of this back bend, breathing into the spine as it lengthens. Drawing your hands now next to your chest, press up to a tabletop pose and walk your knees right onto your blanket. Here we're going to have some choice in our next pose. So um, we're going to take a wide-legged child's pose. Knees can come wide, big toes together. Slide your hips back over your heels or and walk your hands forward bringing your forehead down to the mat or to a block. So options here, we can start with this pose. If you want to stay here, do that. If you'd like to move into a pose to tadpole, slide your hips forward so that they're stacked right over your knees. And bring your fore forearms down onto the mat. You can let your knees slide wider now. They can come as wide as you like them to come. Really stretching into the inner thighs. You can tuck your chin, let your head hang heavy here. Or maybe this is another good time to take your block and rest your head. Or you can stack the fists and rest your head. Up to you. So our final version of this pose is to take frog. So in frog, the toes come um, up, oh, away from one another and you're going to line your ankles up with your knees roll on to the inner edge of your feet so the toes are pointing out and you can stay on your forearms or maybe you can drop your forehead your chest down onto the mat bring your forehead or your chin down hands can rest on the mat reaching forward or keeping them at a cactus. So choose whichever version of this pose works best for you. Whichever you chose, know that it's the best choice for you. Doing whatever speaks to you. Opening up the inner thighs in each of these positions.
you come out of this pose, bring your hands to the mat, but next to your chest, and begin to lift up into a tabletop pose, gently drawing your knees in till they're about hip width apart. Unhook your toes so the tops of your feet are pressed into the mat, and slide your hips back over your heels. Coming into child's pose once again, but this time with the knees together. Lay your chest down over the fronts of your thighs, compressing across the front of the body, and just letting your hands rest next to your heels with the palms facing up. Shoulder blades glide away from the spine and you're breathing into the back body. Kind of have to because you're compressing across the front of your body. Just getting used to having the knees close together once again. Reach the hands forward again and make your way up to table. Walk your knees back, and at this point, you can um, take the, your blanket and set it aside. We won't be needing it again. Walk your hands forward now. And we're gonna make our way into sleeping swan pose. So you can do that from tabletop or from downward facing dog. I'm going to leave that up to you. Some people like down dog, even though it's not technically a yin pose, just because it gives you a little bit more space to bring your foot forward. So let's start by extending that right foot back, curl into the toes, push the heel away. Nice just to open up the back of the leg before we curl it in underneath ourselves. And then when you are ready, when you've opened up the back of the leg. You can bring your right foot forward to the front of the mat, just behind your right wrist, and then tick-tock that right foot across the mat till it is behind the left wrist. Curl your toes in towards your shin and roll onto the pinky toe side of your right foot. Your right knee is gonna come down onto the mat and you can slide your left knee back, bringing the hips down close to the mat. Now, if you're feeling any discomfort in your right knee, in the front knee, come out of this pose right away. Flip over onto your back and hug your shin into your chest in a figure four. Um, that gives you the same stretch as this without the weight of your body down on your hips. So if you're feeling any discomfort here, we don't wanna hurt the knees. So come out of it right away. If you've got a lot of space between your right hip and the mat, take your block and tuck it in underneath your hip or a cushion, whatever feels good there. Top of the left foot is pressing into the mat, top of your left knee, your thigh. Your hips are even and level, so we're not rolling onto that right hip, letting the left hip rise, but we're keeping the hips both pointed towards the front of the mat. When you're ready, you can stay just like this, the weight of your body pressing the hips forward down into the mat, or you can bring your hands down onto the mat and begin to walk them forward. Now feel free to use blocks underneath your hands here to give yourself a little bit of height. Or you can come down onto your forearms. Just notice what's happening with your hips. Maybe you want to bring your elbows wide. And bring your forehead down onto the block or onto a mat. It's up to you.
Bring your hands to the mat on either side of your face. Begin to roll the chest up and away from that bent front leg. Curl your left toes under and draw the knee in a couple of inches. Unwind from that right leg and extend it back behind you. Opening up to the back of the leg again, letting the back of your knee breathe. And then bring the right knee down next to the left. Let's extend through the left leg now. We're going to come into this pose on the other side. Starting with a nice stretch through the back of the leg. And then bringing the left foot forward to the front of the mat. Tick-tocking the left foot over towards the right side of the mat, rolling onto the pinky toe side of the foot, engaging the ankle, drawing the toes back towards the shin, and letting the left knee come down behind the left wrist. Now you may notice right away that you feel very different on this side than you did on the first side. That's really natural. One of the benefits of yoga is getting to know ourselves a little bit better, know the differences in our sides. So feel free to take the block, plop, prop it underneath your hip. Um, if you find that you've got a lot of space here between the hip and the floor. Take a look at your right leg. Make sure that it's straight parallel to the Long edge of the mat, top of the leg is pointed down into the mat. Hips are even. Stay here in this upright position if you like, or you can begin to bring your hands forward. Coming down onto your forearms maybe. You can stack your fists, rest your head here just like that. Maybe you want to come all the way down onto the mat, lying the forehead right down onto the mat, letting the arms rest, letting the upper body be completely relaxed here. Just breathing into this pose. I know that the These, this pose can tend to um, arouse some, some feelings of frustration or aggravation. We store a lot of tension and stress in our hips. And I really believe that when we begin to open up the hips to release that stress, it, it may bubble up as emotion that we're, we're currently having. Just know that frustration, aggravation, anger can be a sign that we are not being able to move forward in a way that we want to. And that can be because of some limited, limiting beliefs, ideas that you're holding true to yourself. So see if while you're holding this pose, if these feelings start to emerge, explore why, what they're, what they're there for, what's happening as these feelings are emerging, bubbling up to the surface. Where in your life are you being held back? And what about your current thought processes is contributing to holding you back?
When you're ready to come out of this pose, bring your palms to the mat. Lift your heart. Curl the right toes under and just draw your knee in a couple of inches. Unwind that left leg and reach it back behind you. Oh. Stretching into the front or the back of your left leg. Bring that left knee down next to your right. Curl into your um, feet. Roll over those feet and extend your legs out in front of you. I'm going to turn so I'm facing you again, and we're going to take a wide-legged forward fold. So extend your legs out. Um, bring your hands next to your hips and just pop your hips forward a couple of inches. So you're really rolled forward on the pelvis, lengthen up through the spine. And as we, we did earlier in practice, we're going to just tuck the chin and bring it to the spine right up in the neck. And then begin to draw that bend down the spine. Walking the hands forward as you need. Keeping the chin tucked, the head heavy. Trying not to reach forward or pull forward in any way, but letting gravity take the body forward and down. Continuing to bring that bend down towards the tailbone until your entire body is rounded. Toes are pointing up at the ceiling. And we're just releasing through this pose. Letting the backs of the knees breathe. Breathing into the back body, feeling that lightness on the inhale. And then a sense of being more grounded on the exhale. Let your arms hang heavy out of the shoulder girdle. Your head hang heavy. Let gravity draw you further into this pose. About five more breaths here. See if you can come to full breath awareness as you hold this pose. Beginning to walk your hands in towards your body. Support yourself with your arms. Lengthen up through the spine, keeping the chin tucked. And then bring the crown of your head up last. Scoop up your right knee and then your left knee. Bring your knees in towards one another. Give yourself a hug. Tuck your chin around the spine. Cross your um Hold opposite elbows across your forearms in front of your knees and then lean back into let your navel fall away from your legs. Tuck the chin. Again, breathe into the back body. I'm going to turn so I'm facing the long way on my mat once again. 
And I'm ready to come down onto our back. So let's bring our fingertips to the mat here and roll down onto the spine. Making any little adjustments that you need to so that you're really comfortable here. Bring your hands out to the sides. You can make a T or a Y or a cactus. And let both knees now fall over to the left as you switch your hips over a little bit to the right. So you're rolling on to the left hip, stacking the right hip over the left, the right knee over the left. Keeping the right shoulder really heavy and down on the mat and bring your gaze over to your right side. Breathe deep and easy here. And the breath moving through the side of the body. Creating space in the body today, as well as in the mind. When you're ready to come out of this pose, just take a deep breath in to start. And then as you exhale, draw your knees back up to center. Pop your hips a little bit over to the left and let your knees fall to the right. Keeping the left shoulder blade down on the mat. You can bring your chin over to your left shoulder. Stack your left hip over the right. Let your knees fall heavy to the right. Your shoulders fall heavy to the left. Getting a twist just in and around your navel. Feeling that space in your left side body. See if there's any, if you can release any muscular tension here. Is there anywhere you're still holding on? Just release that now and let your body relax into this pose.
Nice big breath in here. As you exhale, draw your knees back up to the center. Press into your feet. Straighten out your spine. Draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little hug. Maybe make some circles on the ceiling. One more time, rolling around the back of your pelvis. And then extend your feet out to the bottom corners of the mat for Savasana. Hands can rest next to your hips, palms facing up. Roll your shoulders in underneath you so that your heart lifts. Take a moment here. Just tune into the vibrations of your body, of your mind. Notice how connected you are with yourself in this moment. Notice the spaces that you've created in your body and in your mind. Enjoy the stillness of Savasana for a few minutes, and then we'll come out of it together. Begin now to deepen and lengthen your breath. Exhale long and slow. Again, a big breath in. Exhaling completely. Draw your attention out to your extremities, to your fingers and your toes. Begin to bring some movement back into these areas, drawing circulation. Turn the wrists and the ankles, maybe your head from side to side. Begin to move your arms and legs, stretching out into a full body stretch. Just like you're waking up all over again. Draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug. Sway from side to side. One last massage for that low back. Roll onto your side. 
in the fetal position. Take a couple of breaths here. Preparing to come up to sit. When you're ready, take your time. Keep your eyes shut, your chin tucked as you make your way up to a comfortable seat. Find your shoulders up over your hips and bring the crown of your head up towards the ceiling. Give your shoulders a couple of rolls. Bring your hands into your heart center. Notice now how you're feeling. Inhale the fingertips up to the ceiling. As you exhale, draw the thumbs to the third eye, representing the union of the mind and the body, our true goal of yoga. Let's hinge forward. For our final pose, sealing in the benefits of our practice. Namaste. Thank you all for joining me for this special yin practice. I hope that you have found some way to um, reduce some of your mental clutter, to Marie Kondo your mind, and to find some space for new growth, for new activity to come into your mind. I believe that this is a practice that is well worth revisiting regularly so that we're continually updating ourselves, our minds, our thoughts, our ideas, and making space for new ideas, thoughts, activities to help us continue to move forward. So thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great day.